Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Britta and you are watching Bits with Britta. Hello and thank you so much for watching today. Today I'm going to talk about something very important right now in these challenging times and that is school. So many people are ha struggling to decide what they're going to be doing for their children's education for this coming year. I have gotten tons and tons of questions from friends, neighbors, coworkers. I've heard from people on Instagram, private messages on Facebook, private, uh, private groups in Facebook asking me tons of questions on how to homeschool. If you don't know, I am a homeschooling mom to two boys. I have a almost fifth grader and I have an almost eighth grader. Since I've been asked so many questions and they're all extremely important questions, I thought that I would start a series of videos on how we homeschool. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how we homeschool and where we homeschool in our home. I'm gonna talk about work schedule and homeschooling because I do work and my husband does work. I'm going to talk about other responsibilities in the home that needs to be accomplished even while we are homeschooling. I'm going to talk a little bit about our school schedule and I will have pictures of our homeschool room. I will probably do a separate video of a complete homeschool room tour that I will do separately. So a little background about me with teaching and homeschooling. I am a certified teacher and I live in Colorado. In Colorado, there are some rules and laws and regulations about homeschooling. There are two main avenues that people can take when deciding to homeschool. If you are a certified teacher, then there really isn't much of a requirement on you. Just as long as your certification is up to date, then you can homeschool your children and provide their education as you see fit. If you're a not certified teacher in Colorado, then what you do is you write a letter of intent and you send it into the school district that your children go to, and then you need to test your children on every odd year. So grades three, grade five, grade seven, and so on and so forth. That can be a test as in testing and evaluation like the Iowa test or a state standard test that is approved in Colorado. Or you can have a certified teacher like myself look at a child's improvement throughout the year and if they are showing improvement throughout the year with good examples from tests, essays that they've written, spelling tests, books that they've read, comprehension that they've done on books and things of that nature. As long as you have proof of what your children are doing, then a certified teacher can look at that information, sign off that your child has improved for the year and that can be passed as an evaluation. Since I'm a certified teacher, I can homeschool my kids and not have to go through those steps. However, I do make portfolios of my children's year and I do take attendance thoroughly and make sure that I have all the days that are required, even though the state doesn't require me to do so. I think it's important and my kids deserve the very best. I am a private music teacher. I teach violin, viola, cello, and piano students, and I teach outside of the home and in the home. So my schedule for work, I have planned my work schedule around my responsibilities here at home as the homeschooling mom. I also help an aging parent and make sure that I have plenty of time for his needs. So with, with the responsibilities of my children with homeschooling, the responsibilities of me teaching my private students, and the responsibility of taking care of my aging parent, it's important that I have everything scheduled out and so I can be successful with helping with everything that I need to do throughout the day. So all my responsibilities are met. I know that many parents are struggling to figure out how do I homeschool and work full time. It is difficult to be able to, to figure those things out, all depending on your work schedule and if your work schedule is flexible or not. My work schedule is completely flexible because I can arrange it the way I need to. However, not everybody can do that. So sometimes 
planning for homeschooling doesn't necessarily have to be in the windows of when public school is. If you work during the day, then maybe you need to homeschool in the evenings and some on the weekends. So it can be completely custom made for you and your responsibilities and what you need to get accomplished. Let's talk about how we homeschool. There are roughly seven different types of homeschooling styles, approaches to homeschooling. There's classical, there's traditional, there's Charlotte Mason, there's Montessori, there's unschooling, there's unit studies, and then there's eclectic. All of these are incredible ways to homeschool for very different reasons. I will do a complete video on approaches and styles of homeschooling, but for me, I really enjoy eclectic. That means that we are taking bits of pieces of the different approaches and we are meshing it together for our very own special recipe of homeschooling. Now let's talk about where we homeschool. We have a dining room that we no longer use as a dining room, and so we have transformed it into a homeschool room. It's in a great location in the house because it's right off the kitchen where, let's face it, that's where the main heart of your house is, is in your kitchen. And it's also very close to my father's office so I can help him with anything that he needs throughout the day. It's very inviting and pleasing to have a space, but then at the same time, if we need to pick up and go and go to a doctor's appointment, or if we have some sort of responsibility that we need to take care of, we can pack up our stuff and take it with us on the go. We use some great totes that I love and we can put all of our belongings into the totes and take them on the go. We have homeschooled in the car, we have homeschooled at a park, we have homeschooled just about anywhere. You can find a place to sit down with a pencil and get your work done. Let's talk about a school schedule. I have a lot of questions from friends and family members on how do you organize your day? Do you get it all done in just a couple of hours? I don't. I like to enjoy the day and really dive into information with my family and sometimes we get on tangents and those tangents are amazing and we learn some wonderful things going on a rabbit hole looking for a specific thing that we've learned about and researching it and we really love to be able to research together and enjoy learning together so do we just whip through all of our subjects bam 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 no we take our time and we enjoy our day at first when i started homeschooling i really felt like i had to have a complete schedule with times and expectations of we have to be done by this subject at this time and so on and so forth i also felt like I had to have everything done by a certain time because I have to be able to teach my private lessons in the afternoons. As I continued on with my children, I realized that the stress of we have to get things done really didn't help us. And so what we did instead was make a schedule with no times. We work on our schedule of our day and we make sure that we get everything accomplished but there is no reason for us to stress about how many minutes we are doing on each individual subject. Some subjects take longer than others on each day. Some, sometimes math will be longer than reading. Sometimes reading will be extra long because my youngest is, please mommy, let me read another chapter. Who can say no to that? So it's important to have a plan or a schedule, but I like to keep it open with no times. This is the schedule for 2020 for my children this year. At the beginning of the day, they need to make sure that they get their morning habits done before school. They need to eat breakfast. Obviously, they need to take care of themselves, brushing their teeth and things like that. They need to tidy their room and they need to get their cello practicing done before school starts. Then the school morning will begin. We start with religion with morning basket. Then we go into our main curriculum, which is gather round unit studies. I will be doing a separate video on this amazing curriculum, and I will go a lot more into detail with that. Then my kids separate and they work on their student notebook pages from gather round. That takes them to social studies, science, spelling, any of the subjects that are not on this page are wrapped into gather round. When they are finished with their notebooking, then they go into reading. Both my children have books that 
are set for them for the year to read for their reading time. And they also are using novel studies to help with comprehension and helping them with what they are reading. Once we are finished with our school morning, then we move into lunch. At this point, I give them a little bit of a break. I can help my father. I can, you know, read aloud to the children if I have time, if we have some time. And then we're on to the school in the afternoon. At this point, we uh, work on math. Both my children are using two different curriculums, and I will be going through that in a separate video. Then the children go on to typing or handwriting, whichever, whichever one they need to work on that day. Handwriting, I call handwriting is for cursive. And then we do some electives. I will be explaining the electives in a separate video as well. After school, they need to finish their habits. They need to read for fun. This is a separate book from what they read during school time. And then they need to have some, some quiet time. They need to do their chores and then free time throughout the rest of the evening. Here are some pictures of my homeschool room. I really enjoyed creating this room. It was super fun to put together. My husband made the chalkboard and he made the map. The map is from Amazon and he added the wood and the string to make it look like a pull down map, like an old schoolhouse. My children both have desks. They have some shelving above them that keeps their books for the novels that they are going to read throughout the year. And it's really pretty to be able to see them and get excited and to see the kids get excited about what they're going to be reading next. We have a very large bookcase from Ikea. It keeps us organized and make sure that we are not strewning all of our homeschooling belongings all throughout the house. Like I said before, I will do a separate video on the homeschool room and make sure that I do a proper tour. And that is how we homeschool, where we homeschool, our schedule, and my homeschool room. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below so I can answer questions. It has been wonderful to be able to answer questions about homeschooling and I would love to help anybody that is starting out and is feeling a little lost and a little, little crazed about what they're going to do. So feel free to get in touch with me if you would like some more help. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. If you are a homeschooling mama and you are, or a homeschooling family, and you are interested in more homeschool videos, please give me a thumbs up so I know to make future videos. But I definitely will be continuing this series and making sure that I have the brand new homeschooling families really have some good information of how to get started. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye guys.